Bomb Squad, welcome back to my channel, you guys. Um, what today is? Today is Wednesday, November. Oh, let me get my camera together. November, I want to say second. November the second. All right, so I'm doing this video. I know it's been a couple of days. I just got a lot to tell you guys. Um, what's been going on with me um, and my family. But um, to start off, the reason why you haven't seen me post like any shorts um, videos is because I had surgery on October the 24th. I got my gallbladder removed. You guys, it's been a journey with me. I'm in, I'm in recovering stage. It's been very, very, very rough. Um, I'm gonna have to break this video up into pieces because it's so much to tell y'all, and I can't give it all to you, all of what's been going on in one video. So there may be about two or three videos that I'm going to be doing regarding what's been going on with my health. So, um, back in May of this year, I want to say around about Memorial Day, um, we was in the house, um, with me, my husband and I, my, and our children, I was in the kitchen, you know, cooking, not cooking, washing dishes, and I started experiencing like, because I had dried my hands off, you know, you know, when you wash dishes in hot water, you know, your hands is going to be kind of sweaty and stuff like that. So I drew, I dry my hands off because I started experiencing like sharp pains, like at the top part of my stomach, very, very sharp pains. And I really didn't pay no attention. I was like, well, maybe it's something that ate or, you know, it could be gas or something like that. But, um, the, the pains just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And then I think I have already told y'all the story. So fast forward short, I went back into the emergency room experiencing the same issues. They found out, they did an ultrasound on my stomach found out I had gallstones. I had a lot of them in me. So I went to go see a GI specialist and um, a gallbladder specialist and a, someone who deals with gallstones, gallbladder, all of that, all in one. So it came to find out I needed to have surgery. So my surgery was scheduled for October the 4th, which was on a Monday. It was supposed to be an outpatient surgery Listen, maybe someone who works in the medical field can better explain to me. To me, any time that y'all have, any time someone comes in and have surgery, they should at least keep the person overnight for observation just in case something was to happen. You know, they can be able to learn how to deal with, you know, them having surgery, pain, all that. Because everybody body doesn't do well. You see what I'm saying? So, I end up having my surgery on the 24th, and I basically told them, like, listen, I don't do too well after anesthesia. You know, at least y'all can at least keep me overnight. Listen, I didn't tell them people like three times, so they didn't listen. So, that night of me having my surgery, I want to say around about 11, 30, 12 o'clock, I woke my I started, started breathing real funny. And, you know, I already know that I was going to be in pain for the surgery, which I was already prepared, had my pain medicine and all that stuff. So, I woke my husband up. He rushed me to the emergency room. And lo and behold, they end up keeping me. So I just got released from the hospital on this Monday. So I've been in the hospital from the day that I had my surgery up until the following Monday. So it's, it's just crazy. I end up developing pneumonia. Um, I had 
had like this very sharp pain. So basically, they still stated to me the pain that's been in my stomach is like gas and air. I basically have to walk this off. Walk and walk and walk and walk. And listen, when I am in pain, as bad as I was, I did not want to walk. I basically told them, listen, y'all not going to discharge me. Y'all are going to take care of me and get me to where I need to get to. So where after this, I can be able to manage and handle on my own. And that's exactly what they did. I didn't want to hear what no doctor, what no nurse say, because I know my body. And I know if something is wrong, something is definitely wrong. And y'all want to take care of me. Period. And that's exactly what they did. They took care of me. I was able to get up, start walking after they got the pain. And, you know, I had to take a couple of stool softeners. I had so many breathing treatments, so much medicine. I had had several MRIs. I had CAT scans. I done had a HILDA scan, x-rays. Like, I'm just all x-ray, MRI out, right? I had a GI doctor to come and talk to me. I had the neurologist. Well, basically, we just did like, uh, you know, virtual meeting where he, the, his nurse under him came and talked to me in my room and I was able to see him face to face with the computer. So my husband, thankful for him, he took very good care of me. He was there the entire time while I was in the hospital. I'm thankful that my dad came and stayed with our children, took care of them, took them out to eat, all that. My sister from Atlanta, she came and she was there for me for my surgery, you know. My other sister, Kamisha, she couldn't be there because she was in Ohio, but she called me just about every day. My mom came and visited me in the hospital. She calls me every day to call and check up on me. I'm thankful for my family for calling and being there for us at the time that I need I may look dizzy or I may look kind of funny tired you guys I'm still like I stated I'm still trying to recover you know my body feels weird doing this process of recovering I said I'm gonna go ahead and just get on here and do a video for you guys so y'all can basically know exactly what's been going on with me for the past couple of days and why y'all haven't seen any videos but i do appreciate y'all support because y'all have been watching the videos and y'all really have been y'all really have been supporting my youtube shorts so i really appreciate you guys for that y'all support on that i'm gonna be making some some more um i did make a couple of videos while i was in the hospital so i'm just gonna be reviewing those edit those and put those up for you guys i may include a couple of clips in with this so y'all can see like what's been going on while i was in the hospital i'm grateful for the nurses that um took good care of me this one particular nurse her name is megan she really really took care of me she got to the bottom of my pain and my pain was able to subside when she came on her shift and I just really want to thank Megan I thank her while I was there and I told her I said she was like the first person to be able to make this pain go away to, you know she knows what she was doing she listened to me um she looked back at my my records what's been going on thus far before she came on her shift and she reached out to the doctors and we, they was able to come up with a plan for me to, so I could be able to get better, which she did. Um, but that day of me having my surgery, y'all, it was just, it was rough. It was really, really rough. Um, but like I said, it's going to be a little minute before I can be able to go back to, you know, my normal routine of, you know, taking care of myself i'm able to get up and walk you know i do have a walker um so the hospital um manager came in um they did put an order for me to get a walker that's how i was able to like get up and walk around in the hospital i did get up a couple of times walked around in the hospital they cheered me on 
Um, one of the weird things after I had my surgery, it's like I didn't have an appetite for food. It's like I try to eat it. It's like it didn't matter what it was. It was just like I eat bits and pieces here and there, and then I was like over it. The smell of food just made me very, very nauseated. I was like, I don't want it. So they switched me from solid foods to liquid. That was like the worst thing ever. I never seen chicken broth look liquidy. Liquidy. That may not be a word, but I made it up anyway. Look like that. And then when you put the spoon in and try to like sip it sip on it it was like real thick like i was like this ain't no is this jello because it looked just like jello i kid you not it looked a watery but you know when you put the spoon in and you shake it it was you know you know how a chicken broth look and then like that immediately turned me off i told him i said i can't deal with this so i was on liquids for like two days but i kid you not my husband went to the kitchen in the hospital he got me an apple and he got me a grilled cheese sandwich when i ate that grilled cheese sandwich and i tore that apple up i said okay cool this is doing good on me this is doing good on my stomach so i talked to my nurse and i was like can y'all change my um my diet back to solids because this liquid stuff ain't working now to know me, everybody that knows me, knows me, knows that I love ice cream. They gave me sherbet and ice cream, and I did not eat none of it. So, for me to not eat ice cream and sherbet, you know something is definitely wrong. Something is off, okay? So, um, yeah, it just sat there. I tried to eat it, it just it, it wasn't. The sherbet wasn't sherbeting. The ice cream wasn't creaming it really wasn't so what i did was um when my nurse said okay cool we'll switch you back to solids and we'll see how you do and if you do good we'll keep you on it if not we're gonna have to go back to the liquid we're just gonna have to figure something out so i told him i said when well, my husband got me an apple from downstairs in the kitchen and he got me a grilled cheese sandwich i ate that it didn't do nothing to me because, y'all, I was starving. Like, really, I was hungry, but I just didn't have an appetite for food whatsoever. So, I took that, and um, after that, it's like I'm, I got a, a taste for apples now. I don't know what it is. Normally, I could eat an apple here and there. I'm not like an apple eater. But, um, now I'm starting to eat apples. It's like I'm. that's what I want now, just apples, apples, apples. Um, I had to wear the pins because I didn't have no control of my bowels whatsoever, regardless if it was a number one or a number two, like really, I messed up on myself. I tried to get up to go to the bathroom. It wasn't working. I mean, I tell you, I had muscle spasms in my stomach to where I was sitting up to eat and my husband and I was talking and I had, and then next thing you know, I was I had a muscle spasm so hard and it was very painful to where it, I, I, I peed on myself. I didn't wish that on nobody. And every time I, I could feel them coming on, but what helped me to get through that pain was to take deep breaths. I had to keep doing it over and over and over. The muscle spasms come out of nowhere. They come out of nowhere and it was in the areas where I had my scissions at. So to have muscle spasms in the area where I had my scission at, I'm already sore. My stomach is already swollen. I'm already in pain. And to have those muscle spasms in that area, that made it worse to where it took my breath away. And it's the first time I experienced that was around, it was in my sleep. And I was sleeping so good because um, they gave me some melatonin. I told that nurse, my doctor, I said, Megan, I said, listen, I haven't been able to sleep for the past two days since I've been here. I need rest. I said, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. So she looked into it, 
with everything that was going on, the doctor did clear it for me to get some melatonin. She gave me some melatonin. She gave me the medicine for my pain. It starts with the B, but I can't think of the name of it. When I tell you guys, when I took that melatonin and took that medicine for my pain, I was out for the count. She, my, uh, Megan told me, she was like, I came in your room a couple of times. She said, you was gone, mouth wide open and snowing. I said, hey, listen, I was going to go get it because I was tired. She was like, you could tell you was tired. She said, you, it looks all in your face that you was tired. And the way you, she said, the way I was laying, she could tell that I was tired, but I was comfortable at the same time. But yeah, I was. And sleeping in a hospital, you know, period, is going to be uncomfortable. Waiting in the waiting room is uncomfortable. But being in there for a whole week is very uncomfortable. I tried to get comfortable. I tried to move here. There, it just wasn't working. Hospital wasn't hospitaling. It really wasn't. But other than that, um, I had so many nurses, so many doctors that I had seen. The doctor that did my surgery came in there. I have a follow-up with him on November 10th. And me and him going to have a long conversation about the care that I received after I had my surgery. I'm, I'm going to have a long conversation with him. I'm not going to have an attitude with him. I'm just going to basically express my concerns and my issues that I had right after my surgery. And I want him to know. Like, listen, this was uncalled for. I told everybody when when I had to go back to the emergency room, I let them know I expressed my issues. The entire time I was there in the hospital, I expressed my issues. Before I left, I expressed my issues. The hospital manager called me and I expressed my issues. So they fully aware of my issues and concerns that I had after I had my surgery because... Something that you was born with and then later on in life, it has to be removed. To me, they should at least keep people overnight. Any type of surgery should be at least keep the person overnight for observation. Just to see, you know, how well or not well that person would do. You know what I'm saying? Because some people may not have help at all. Once they have that surgery, they may not have someone to come up and stay there and be with them. Or, you know, they may not have nobody at the house to be with them throughout the night and the days to come from them to have that surgery. Everybody's situation is totally different. Everybody's body is totally different. Everybody's may re body may react totally different. And I knew mine's going in. And for me, for my for my voice and my issues and my concerns not to be heard, we got a problem. We definitely have a big problem. And I know for one thing and two things for sure, that doctor that did my surgery, I'm not never going back to him for anything. I will find me somewhere else to go. My primary doctor referred me to that doctor, and I got an appointment with my primary doctor as well. And I'm going to let him know, do not refer me to, do, do not, not do not, do, do not refer me to him ever again. You're going to have to refer me to somewhere else. If not, if that's going to be a problem, I'm going to find me another primary doctor because ain't nobody got time for that having all these breathing treatments and tubes all over everywhere and then getting poked here poked here poked here then i got busted veins my both of my right arms and my left arms look terrible because they can barely find my veins they had to get an mri i had to get an mri technician to come in to find my veins like my right arm is the best arm for for me to draw blood but when that started happening like because I was on, my sister had called me, and um, me and her was talking in the middle of talking. I felt pain in my arm. I was like, well, maybe because I'm moving my arm around and the IV is over there. And I started looking over there. My arm was swollen from the dog on IV. So I had to rush and call the doctor. They, um, the nurse, she came in, so they had to take that out. 
and then they had to come on my left side they couldn't find one normally like how they normally do so i had to wait for mri tech to come in and then that started acting up i told him i said forget it y'all tear me up in here for real so it was just like one thing after another after another after another but one good thing is i took a shower you guys and when i took that shower i felt so good I felt very, very good. They can't say, well, this is good. She's laying here and just not doing anything. She's laying here, not taking a shower. I took showers. One of the things that I was proud of was when the fact that I started getting up on my own and I started going to the bathroom. I was happy about that. But one time, I couldn't make it, you guys. I don't know what happened. It's like I sneezed and then everything just came out. So, you know, those are embarrassing moments. I did apologize to the nurses. I kept apologizing. I'm like, listen, I tried to get up on my own. It wasn't working. But, hey, it is what it is. You know, I'm pretty sure they used to it on a regular basis. But... It's not like I wasn't just doing it on, you know, intentionally and just not getting up, not doing anything. But I did get up and use the bathroom on my own. But like I stated, it's going to be a lot of videos and I'm going to be sitting down explaining to, you know, all the things that I've been going through. But I really wanted to get on here to basically let y'all know what's been going on, why y'all haven't been seeing me for the past couple of days. So this is what's been going on but i'm not gonna be on here this long i just wanted to give y'all update um so i will be doing more sit downs and i'm gonna be scheduling a live here pretty soon but i'm gonna schedule it a couple of days in advance so y'all know exactly when i'll be able to go when i will be going live to give y'all more updates but that's just a little bit that sums it all up. Sorta. Of. But um, I'm about to take my medicine. Probably get me something to eat. I ate breakfast. I'm am I am able to keep food down. So that's the best part. That I'm able to at least keep you know food down. I'm not eating fast foods. I am watching when I'm eating. I've been drinking water, 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 water. And it's a good thing. It's it's a good thing. Yes, I lost a lot of weight. I don't know how much I lost. I haven't gotten on the scale. So the last time I got on the scale was before my surgery. And then, you know, when you go to the emergency room, they make you get on the scale. So anyways... I will be. Mm. Mm. I might take me a little nap too. Oh, my phone is right here. So, this is to sum it up, you guys. So, y'all stay tuned for my next video. Alright, so happy hump day, Wednesday. Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all day. And peace out.